Hello and welcome to the Blazing Fast Podcast. It is week three of the playoffs. Your Blackman Blaze are now 10 and 2, and we are heading into the semifinal game against Oakland on Friday night. I am your host, Jeff Gerke. And I'm Tim Jones. And we are coming to you live from Blaze Drive. Again, the home of the 10 and 2 Blackman Blaze football team onto the third round of the playoffs. Everybody's getting super hyped. Uh, we're going to recap the last week's big victory over in uh, Coffee County, and we'll give you a preview for the Oakland game and interview a couple of players. Um, but just a very exciting time to be here at Blackman. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do it. Again, I'm Jeff Gerke. I'm your host. I'm the defense coordinator here at Blackman. I'm Tim Jones. I'm the outside linebackers coach for the Blaze. And, um, you know, what a heck of a game last Friday night in wow. Manchester. Just unbelievable atmosphere. That's just what high school football is all about. Yeah, I mean, everybody was talking about it throughout the weekend of how great the atmosphere was for both teams, really. Uh, oh, yeah. Coffee County has quite an atmosphere. They got the Jumbotron. They had a full house. And then on our end, uh, the Blaze fans really showed up and showed out, and they were loud. Yeah, they, it wasn't as big a crowd as usual, but they made up for it with the uh, the raucous uh, student section. So it was very uh, very exciting game, big game. We got out of there with the victory. Uh, it was 35-31. Yeah, 35-31, uh, four-quarter game, came down to the end. Just everything you want, you want in a playoff game. And, um, you know, now it's on to Oakland. Yeah, everybody's getting ready for the huge playoff game at Oakland this, this week, so we want to emphasize that early and often. It is at Oakland, and we need every Blaze fan that is listening to this podcast that you know that's not listening, that you need to tell them to listen to the podcast, tell them to go to the game, because we have to fill out the visitor section. Yep, and it's the only game in town. Everybody else in Rutherford County got beat last week, so it's just it's just us and them. So uh, we really need you out there, and the tickets should be a hot item um, heading into Thanksgiving break and all that. So if you uh, love high school football, it's going to be an absolute uh, classic game. Um, So we're looking forward to all our Blackman fans coming out there to see it. So before we get into the recap of last week's game, uh, we want to take time to thank one of our sponsors. So we want to thank Perkins and Jones Attorneys at Law. Uh, If you have any legal needs here uh, in the Rutherford County area, please reach out to them. Uh, They've been huge supporters of the show, um, and they can help you out with any legal needs. Um, And so reach out at borotnlaw.com. Check out all the services that they offer um, because we want to take a special shout-out to all our sponsors this week as we go through it because we are now sitting at a new table with new chairs, an awesome setup. It, it's quite unbelievable. Yeah, we've got lighting. We've, we're, 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 we're piece by piece. Every week we walk in here and there's something new. So uh, that's all. Thank you to the people that, that supported us. Again, we say it every week. This is not for the football team. We are about to start the uh, Blaze Hoops podcast um, in the coming weeks. You know, and we want to make this the podcast center for Rutherford County Schools, um, and we're well on our way. So we appreciate your support, and if you guys could reach out and support our our sponsors, that would be great. Yep. So let's talk about the offense a little bit on Friday. Um, we had 416 total yards of offense and another huge performance from one and only Justin Brown, who had seven catches for 163 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, I think he had uh, two more rushing. He did. He had two more rushing touchdowns on top of that. I mean, guys, we had two Mr. Football candidates. We love Jack, but if you can find a better football player in the state of Tennessee, come find me. Justin Brown, uh, he plays every snap on offense and just about every snap on defense. And I'm telling you, if he didn't want to play wide receiver in the future, he could probably go wherever he wanted to go and play free safety. He had a huge night. He made two tackles for loss at free safety, just running people down. Just an absolute just warrior of a football player, great kid. But the stats are there's no one even close in wide receiver in, in the entire state. But I bet you all those guys are not turning around playing free safety too. And then uh, another player for us that had a great game on offense, we've talked about before, Ben Marshall. He had eight carries for 101 yards and a touchdown, and he plays about 75 snaps, 75% of the snaps on defense. Yeah, and those, I mean, we're leaning on those guys. They're big-time football players, and they've stepped up here in the last couple of weeks to make sure that we keep this thing rolling. Um, big game by Ben. He had a humongous sack on a fourth down 
that really just sealed the game for us. Just an incredible football play. Yeah, so um, when we when we talk about the game on Friday, um, we actually fell behind ten to nothing pretty quick, and to see the bounce back from the team, uh, I think that was incredible to see. You know, I'm I'm kind of glad it was a close game. You know, it was wet, it was cold. Uh, we're playing on grass, the first away game in two months, and we had to fight through all kinds of adversity. Um, bad things kept happening. We had four turnovers. We had you know all kinds of stuff go against us. Some bad calls, some bad breaks. But you could see it after the 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 uh, third turnover, Jacob Page and and um, Elijah Pitts and Ben and the, they got everybody together and said it's not happening. We're not going to lose this game. And those guys just stepped up and it was a totally different team from that moment on. And they you know it was just a runaway train. You just couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, the one thing to remember when you're going into the second half, the score is always zero zero. And we take that to heart, and we mean it, and it's become part of our personality. And we showed it in the third quarter. And we woke up, crowd was into it. It was an awesome atmosphere. Uh, Coach, why don't you talk about the defense a little bit? Yeah, we, you know, they were big up front. We knew they were going to be big and try to pound us. Um, you know, they had a, a dual threat quarterback could run around, and make things happen, and they had one of the best receiver targets that we faced all year. We did a good job bottling up the tight end, um, but we gave up a bunch of yards, especially the first two drives. Uh, they went down the field. We were able to hold them to the field goal on the second drive, but they were up 10 nothing right out of the gate. Um, and, and our guys, we got on the sidelines and said, do you all want to go home? Are, are you going to start manning up here and taking on these guys? And, and we stepped up, and from those first two drives, you know, we gave up uh, 70 yards rushing. The rest of the game we gave up f- like something like 70 in the like, next three quarters. Um, guys tackled much better. We were way more physical. Um, and we really shut them down in the passing game. So, you know, the, the, we had a bunch of guys, usual cast of characters, you know, Terrence Carpenter, Ben Marshall, uh, Wilkerson, w- uh, Will King, uh, and then we sealed the game. Um, his second interception of the night, Jacob Page sealed the game on a Hail Mary, um, really stepping up for us on defense, and we're glad to have him back on that side of the ball. We come out of Coffee County with a 35-31 win. No wins in the playoffs are easy, especially in 6A football, and we were just ready to enjoy it coming back to the borough and bringing home the win. And that's going to lead us into our player interviews this week. And before we do, we want to thank our second sponsor today, and it's Borough Business Labs. If you're looking at your website for your business or your organization and you're thinking, how can I get more out of my online presence? That's when you need to reach out to Borough Business Labs. They will help streamline your website to meet all of your needs specifically designed for your business. It will have a clean, professional look that's also functional. They are huge sponsors of what we do here and everything we do at Blackman, so we really want to thank Borough Business Labs. Please visit their website and let them know that uh, you're big supporters of the Blaze and that you want to have the best-looking website in your profession. We say it every week. They just they. I mean, if you come look at our website, it's all you got to do is go to the Blackman Football website, and you can see what they're capable of, and they will get your digital footprint, you know, where you want it to be. So uh, let's head into our uh, offensive player of the week, who's actually our special teams player of the year, the best onside kicker in the state of Tennessee, maybe the nation, Evan Russell. Evan, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's good to be here. So Evan, we were talking about as we came up here. We want to say that we hold the unofficial state record for 11 onside kicks recovered this year. What do you have to say about that? I mean, I think we definitely do. I think it could definitely be around like 20, 25, but I mean, we call the cycle squad for a reason. We just have maniacs on the left side of the ball who just kind of run to it and hit whoever in front of them and get the ball. I mean, it, it, 11, that's, that's almost one a game. Okay, and I'm telling you, we could we probably could have twenty. We've gotten our hands on at least another eight or nine. Um and he's right. We got they call him the psycho squad. It's all of our just crazy kids that love contact that that might be their only role. It's the only time they get in the game is kickoff, but they get so hyped for it. But Evan is the leader of that group. If you've come to one of our games, you've seen it. He doesn't just do one on kick. He's got like seven in the bag that he can do. He spends all day at practice kicking field goals and working on that stuff. And it has become a part of our identity and really a difference maker for us. For, for, for him to have 11, 
you know, it's got to be close to a record if it's not the record, and there's no one more deserving than him because he puts in the work. So, Evan, can you just tell the people kind of how you started getting into all these different onside kicks that you do? Well, it was last year, Coach T, he just had crazy ideas of where he wanted the ball, how he wanted it to do. And so that whole season last year in summer, I just placed the ball down like a different way, different position, kicked it differently, and I just kind of found what worked. And um, just found what worked. So, Evan, when you go into a game um, and you see the team getting ready and everybody's going through their pregame, how do you get mentally ready for what you need to do on Friday nights? It's Okay, it's going to sound weird, but it's better to not focus on the game or else I overthink it, and that just makes me mess up kicks. So, honestly, just don't even focus on it. Pickers and left-handed pitchers. <laughs> We're weird, I know, but, hey, it works. Hey, hey, and the other thing, he's five for five in extra points, on, and we needed all of them all of on them. Friday. Needed all of them. So just a really, really awesome p- kicking performance all around. And he's been doing it all year. And we're going to need him on Friday. Um, but it, if you think about it, every onside kick that we recover is a turnover because we get to steal a possession. And that is the whole purpose. Yes, on defense, does it stink when we don't recover it because they get the ball at the 50? <laughs> yes. But we've adapted to that. That is part of our identity. But when there is nobody more hyped when we recover one of those than the defense because we know we got a chance to go up. And the more points we put on the board, the easier it is for us. So Evan is a – I don't know if he's an offensive player or a defense player, but we're going to own him. We're going <laughs> to yeah, say gonna he's part of the him. defense. I'm, I'm something. But, no, the energy is crazy when we get one of the kicks back. Whatever game it is, no matter how many fans are there, the side, like everyone goes crazy. And especially when we take advantage and score from it, it's just unreal. Such a catalyst. Such a catalyst for us. So, all right. So, we're going to get to know Evan a little bit. So, we're going to do a little bit of rapid fire. You ready? No. Okay. (laughs) Evan, (laughs) who's your favorite football player? Anders Carlson. He's uh, Auburn's best kicker. Okay. There we go. Kicker. Weird stuff. Uh, What is your favorite uh, musical artist? Um, Shoot. I don't know. Kickers. I I don't know. Uh, know. let's, Let's do an easy one. What's your favorite food? Cheeseburgers. Or probably sea chicken. You've probably never heard of it, but it's amazing. You should try it. Okay. Wait, what was it? Poppy Sea Chicken. Oh, yeah, I I have heard oh, of it. it's so <laughs> good. What's your favorite uh, TV show? Breaking Bad. Okay. Oh, great call. Great call. Amazing. Thank you. All right, Evan, this is your chance to give shout-outs, thank yous, to anybody that's important to you, helped you get to where you are. This is your chance. Let them know what you think. Well, Jack holds for me, and he. I don't think Jack has had a bad hold all year. Um. Coach Jordan, he came into the program this season, and I think he made a lot of difference getting to actually work with the special teams instead of having to do, like, multiple jobs. He, he brought a lot of character into it. The psycho squad, he kind of made all of it. Um, my parents, obviously, you know. Yeah, they, your, dad, they, your dad does a great job getting pictures for us, too. He does. He I think every single picture you see around the school or on social media is all my dad. Yeah, he's caught me a few times. Every, he does. every week. You can't <laughs> wait for the run out of the tunnel I picture. Can't get away. Oh, my goodness. He gets that form perfectly. Yeah, something he like that. It. Well, Evan, we want to thank you uh, for what you provide to the team. Like I said, you, you literally can change games with what you do, and we appreciate it. So thanks for coming on the show. Why don't you give us a go, Blaze? Of course. Go, Blaze. All right. We're going to bring on our next guest. Before we do, we want to take a moment to thank Dynamo Freight. Dynamo Freight is your go-to source for your logistics needs. So whether your business is big or small, they don't just handle your logistics. They specialize it to the size of your company and what you're looking for. They are 24-7, 365. You can reach out to them at any time. So make sure you call them at 888-201-7882 or go to dynamofreight.com. Reach out to their huge supporters. Um, we're able to do a lot of what we've done because of them. So please reach out to Dynamo Freight. Again, just a huge national company coming in here, trying to help out our program, trying to help out our school. Um, I think believe this new table is directly because of them. So shout out Dynamo Freight. If you guys are a company looking for some logistics, give them a call, please. All right, so uh, it wasn't our best defensive performance, but we sure as heck uh, showed up when we needed to, and a big part of that, one of the catalysts all year, um, you know, Will King and Mason Russell get all the headlines, but this kid is 5'11", 180 pounds, playing defensive end, 
and he's made as many plays on our defense as anybody. His name's Tristan Wilkerson. He's a junior, and we wouldn't be here without him. So let's welcome onto the show. Uh, Tristan Wilkerson, welcome to be here. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. All right, Tristan, welcome to the show. Uh, I just want to talk to you about the intensity that you bring in a football game is unbelievable, and it's what we're looking for out of every defensive player. How do you get yourself mentally ready to bring the havoc and the mayhem that you do on Fridays? You know, um, really, it's just it's just like a business business trip for me. You know, I just go out there, get my mind right, just get prepared to play, go out there for my teammates. I, I really do it for the – I'm really doing this for the seniors because, you know, I really look up to them. I've been playing with them since middle school, so, you know, just I want them to enjoy the rest of the season, and I'm doing this just to get better and just going out there doing what I got to do and looking forward to playing a lot better next year as well. I mean, we Tristan was one of our best JV players last year, and we didn't know what to do with him because he's a little undersized, but he's one of the most physical kids we had. And I stole him and put him on the defensive line because I knew whatever he was going to do, he was going to do it 100 miles an hour. But, you know, there's not a player on our team – that is more feared among his teammates than Tristan Wilkerson. He's the silent assassin, but he's the most physical dude pound for pound on our team. And that's just something you can't coach. And, you know, it shows up on the film every week. He makes a play where you're just like, dang, how did he do that? So he's, uh, he's the player of the week. He could have been player of the week a bunch of times, but some guys had really, really good performances. But last week he had three tackles for loss all in the second half. And he made a solo tackle, down on the goal line to make them force a, a field goal instead of a touchdown, and it might have been the turning point of the game. So can you walk us through that play on the speed option down there on the goal line? So um, really, you know, I don't know. It was just like you saw the ball and you just – Pretty, I, I, pretty I mean, much yeah, just, like a, <laughs> just like a heat-seeking missile. I just went after the ball, yes. you know, third down stop, turn, uh, getting that to a field goal, you know. I mean, the quarterback is a heck of a player. He's going to be a stud. I mean, Johnny Football out there running around. And Wilkerson is a defensive lineman, yep. plays the dive, and then runs down the quarterback. I mean, you. I mean, just for you to do that. And then you had that big hit in the second half. What was your mindset on that? I know you – yeah. Once I made that hit, it was just like everything was just like – I could see everybody on the sidelines just hype, the crowd going crazy. You know, it was like – like you said the other day, it was like a Jadavion Clowney hit. I was what? like <laughs> – Man, that was one of my best tackles of the season, and, you know, and I really enjoyed that moment. Another thing about Tristan, he is the ultimate coachable player. So sometimes in the year he, he comes to, to my group, right, and we're repping him at outside backer, and he, he just takes in everything that we coach, and he immediately applies it. So, Tristan, can you talk about, like, what, what leads you to be such a coachable player? You know, um, I have very respectable coaches. You know, um, my mindset – I just it, I do it to get better, you know. Um, I like going out there, learning new things, and really, it's just the way the coaches are because y'all are so very, like I said, very respectable. It's easy to know, learn new stuff, go out there, apply it, and just keep getting better every day. You know what I think it is? A lot of our kids are this way, but Tristan just loves football. He loves it. If we had to practice every day at five a.m., he'd be here. He loves football, and that's what I think that's why you're so coachable, man. All right, well, we're going to uh, get to know Tristan a little bit, the silent assassin over here. All right, Tristan, who is your favorite football player? Um, I'm going to say Derrick Henry. I've been winning from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite food? Uh, definitely tacos, beef tacos. All right. What is your favorite musical artist? Um, Probably going to have to say Kendrick Lamar. What is your favorite thing about playing football at Blackman High School? Um, just the just the team in general. You know, being around all all my brothers. You know, I just I just love the atmosphere here. I love everybody here. And what is your goal for the rest of the season? Um, hopefully make it to the state championship. You know, that's what I want to do. What are we gonna do when we get there? Win. There you go. <laughs> all right, Tristan. This is your time to thank who you need to thank. Did your shout outs? Go ahead. I want to shout out my parents. You know, they really helped me get to the person I am today. My brother, he's always been there for me, and I just want to say that I love them. And All right, buddy, why don't you get us out of here on a go blaze. Go blaze. All right, well, hey, we got a big game this week. 
Uh, everybody knows what the deal is. Everybody knows the rivalry. We might uh, be dropping a bonus preview episode, so stay on the lookout for that. Um, but until then, we're going to get out of here. Um, Tim, why don't you get us out? Yeah, if you just listen to our first interview with Evan and then you hear – the things that Tristan Wilkerson says. If you're not excited for this program, if you're not excited for what we're doing here, don't come to the game on Friday. But you hear these kids. You hear what they put in. We expect all the community to be there on Friday. So I'm just going to end it on a go blaze. Go blaze. Go blaze.